Ubrim un torn. So we will have a quick round for Q and A's. If there are any questions that you may have, and let me say that, as Thomas was saying at the beginning, this film. I think that closely relates to the research work that Moisés introduced on um, his was a scientific research, but anyway, this film was also researching the police records, the police files, and it was somehow similar, therefore, and you also in same times but different countries in different settings because Germany back then it was a democratic country and yet these things were happening whereas here in Spain we were living under Franco's regime anyway it's not up to me to do the talking so let's draw on the occasion that we have Thomas here with us and just like you were saying at the beginning, which I think was interesting. Maybe you can tell us a bit more. Thank you for the translation also. Um, it's reality what you see in here. We um, found the footage on the beginning of the movie in the toilet. The policeman would be behind the mirrors and film the man in the toilet. Uh, we had original material and we uh, reenacted it with actors. And so it's a question who is the pervert on this side, like the one meeting in, in the toilet or the ones behind the mirror, because a uh, man couldn't meet anywhere, so they met at the toilet. Um, people um, told us all these stories. Um, we started in Berlin in an archive for uh, different uh, memories, they call it. And yeah, we talked to men who experienced things like that. So um, they were in concentration camp. After the war, the Allies freed them and put them in jail again. So this was, for me, like horror. Yeah. And this anger I felt uh, we wanted to put in a movie. Yeah. I uh, don't know if you have any questions, otherwise I can continue. No questions? Fine, so other than what you were telling now, um, the, the characters, as you were saying, they are based on diverse stories. I mean, Hans or Victor, they did not exist as such, as specific individuals, but they would exist as characters. So you kind of rebuild, recreated these characters. And, and I think it's interesting to know how you happen to know about these stories. How did you start it off? Archive and um, they got us some um, people we could really talk. Um, no of the man, no one of the men is alive. No one could see the movie because they were old and uh, last year, my country, Austria, said, sorry, we made a mistake. And two years before, Germany said, okay, we made a mistake. But it took, like, too long for those men to hear that, that it was not fair. Um, so, but we could talk to a few of them, and we melted together, like, three or four biographies to one biography to tell one story uh, of incredible injustice. You had to, uh, first you had testimonies, uh, mm. like voice testimonies and live testimonies, and then you, you searched for a story for the history in the archives. Yes, guess. we also went to gay bars and went to the places, the old people in the corner. We asked them, have you been to prison because you were gay? And they would start crying, so yes. Mm. It, was a very, it was a secret for many of those men they wouldn't talk about it. But when we came to ask them, they started talking. Sometimes they had a partner, and the partner, he didn't know that the other one was in prison. And he said, well, I was in prison too, and both started crying. It was very emotional. 
and it was also they never lost their humor. So we tried to put a little bit of this humor in the in the in the movie too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's a bit difficult. Yes. yes. <laughs> but yes, we had some, some moments of laugh as mm. well. Uh, because if you lose your humor, um, people told us you cannot survive because it's so sarcastic, the whole situation. Um, it's so perverted that you get into a prison because you love someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as you said, uh, also the, the who is the pervert in the mm. in the history in mm. in the story in these mm. stories. Mm. Let's get some question. No. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have a question because I'm and it's from history and. Um, I'm curious about the way in which you combine historical sources uh, or um, oral testimonies with the narrative of the film, with the, the plot of the film. And there are, are there boundaries between the two or not? Uh, we can create new type of narratives and trying to grasp these experiences mm. through another way of telling mm, and accounting. And I'm curious about that. Thank mm. you. I think uh, you can combine, uh, like nobody really knows how it feels except the one who r lived it. So uh, we, we try to um, create an atmosphere that you can feel what it could be like. So all the stories, like how they communicate in prison with the little holes in the book, or um, that they meet uh, in the in outside during the night, these stories they are real. But you never know. Um, it's a fiction movie, so we don't know if it really looked like this, if if they were really um, like. Um, so so you you try to research a lot and and. Uh, after that, um, we were very happy that many people um, who experienced things like this, um, they t told us, okay, um, it wasn't exactly the same situation as you portrayed it, but the feeling was the same. So for us, it was more important to transport uh, um, the, the, yeah, the feeling um, of a certain period of time. So. I think it's necessary not just to uh, tell the stories, but to tell the stories that someone listens to, to them. So it's, 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 it's difficult sometimes. But um, for a movie, um, we, we try to do it this way. Yeah, yeah. Hi, so I have another question. Um, because when, when using this kind of historical material to, to make a movie, uh, I have two, uh, it's two questions. First, um, I guess you have um, shown the movie around the different cities or different festivals. So how is re usually the, re uh, the, the general reaction? I guess some people that um, have similar situation have watched the movie and how actually they reacted. And also, uh, did you get any bl blacklash or any kind of uh, reaction from any kind of shop? Because I'm thinking about other documentaries or movies that could be similar and people involved in that kind of situations, they they criticize that, okay, you are portraying this from the present point of view or not. So I'm just curious about that, if mm -hmm. you get any kind of criticism. Mm -hmm. uh, we got very good um, reactions. We were even on many queer film festivals. Uh, we, in the beginning, we were very afraid because it's a huge history we want to portray. It's like 25 years and it's not so easy to do. Um, we got bad. Um, um, response from countries that wouldn't want to show it, like Turkey, they want to, they don't want to show it, and and many uh, other countries, they don't want to touch uh, homosexual issues, and the 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 story was that many like aunts from my family or um, people who never um, thought about um, like homosexuals, man, many came after the movie and said, I was moved, um, I could feel that this is real love, men can love each other also. So it was for a few, um, like um, the beginning of, um, of um, 
conversation somehow. So there we had really good feedback um, from countries that don't want to um, tell these stories and don't want to hear. And we are, have the same problem. As I said, just one year ago, not even one year ago, my country said, sorry, we made a mistake, but now everyone's dead. So there's even Western countries that have difficulties facing those injustices. Yeah. Fine, so I think that if there are no further questions, Oh, you, you, you have a comment? Yes, one, one last question, if I may. I, I think you said everything, more or less, about the, the process of uh, the creation process of the film. But I'm curious about the, the prison, the jail. Where is it? Is it open? Is, it, is there a memorial there nowadays? Or I don't know. Tell us a bit, please. Um, it's an old um, uh, German, uh, d uh, German democratic. Um, 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 it, it was a dictatorship um, um, prison and uh, it was empty and we could do all what we wanted to do. That's what the reason why we uh, went to Germany and Austria, we couldn't find an empty prison. And it was really uh, interesting there because there were so many stories. The feeling was very intense and the whole team was locked together all the time. And then there was Corona and everyone would go home and we didn't know if we can finish the movie because they wanted to tear down the, the whole building and today it is a student home <laughs> so they rebuilt the the prison for students and uh, it really and um, it's um, just a very historical um, um, building we were happy to find and um, it, it, it was easier for us to shoot this historical movie in a prison because even today prisons look a lot the same. So we had uh, people from Iran in the audience and they said, I just fled from Iran because I spent in such a prison under such conditions because I am gay. So I'm so happy to be here now. So it's not, uh, it's not over. It's in one out of three countries worldwide, uh, homosexuality is uh, still uh, under punishment. So um, this seems something like we have overcome, but it's not very uh, safe, it's not very secure, and we have to work on that freedom uh, each day to not lose it again. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas, for your presence, for, your, for the discussion, for the, the movie. <laughs> And well, for para, para que tothom sàpiga, també la pel·lícula és... Just so you know, this film is available in filming, the filming platform. Just a few weeks ago, you can access through the filming platform. There are also some screenings down uh, in the cinema theater, and the movie theater, so please do recommend it. And thank you, by the way.